Hello everyone, we'll get started with our class now. Welcome to Palak Studio Inc's online art class. Uh, for today's class, let's go through the supplies you'll be needing for, uh, for the art class. Um, you'll be needing your watercolor paper, which is a little bit thicker paper than the usual ones. Now, let's say if you do not have a watercolor paper, the usual papers are fine. Um, it's just that it's going to become a little bit crumbly because it's not as thick as you would uh, want it to be. Other than that, in terms of colors, you can use gouache colors or acrylic colors or watercolors or even those dry tablet colors uh, to use the colors from that. So either or should be fine because with all those colors, today's class is going to be relevant to you. If you do not have any of these colors, you could always use crayons or pencil colors. It's going to be different techniques, but uh, better than uh, doing nothing and just kind of observing the techniques and uh, doing it would be nicer. Lovely. So let's get started uh, with the classes. Now, if you guys have any questions in between while we're doing the class, please feel free to note down all the questions in the chat section. Um, I will be looking at the chat section after every few minutes. So once I'm done with one step, I can always um, look at it again and then I can go through the questions for you. Okay. Um, to get, get started, uh, first of all, we're going to keep our paper standing and we are going to paint a, port, a, lands, um, a landscape today, but we're going to keep our paper portrait, meaning we're going to keep our paper standing. We're not going to keep it sleeping. We keep it standing here. The first step of our painting is we take a pencil, we're going to lay out some basic lines so that we know that which lines are, are to be laid where, and then we'll start with our coloring. Um, firstly, at the base of our painting here, I'm just going to go ahead with a very crooked line and we're going to show some um, mountainy hills here. Make sure you're draw, drawing it extremely light because we don't want our lines to be um, visible. So we'll try and draw as light as possible in our drawing. I'll go a little bit darker so you guys can see it properly. But uh, in your own drawing, please go as light as possible. On top of it now, we're just going to go ahead with another line. So there's going to be two layers of it. And then after that, we go ahead with one more. There we go. So we're going to do three lines to show three different layers of our mountain ranges here, which we're again going to color, shade, make it very, very pretty at the end of the day. Um, and that is it for our drawing portion. We'll now right away start with our painting. Uh, make sure again, your drawing is nicely done, which are these lines have kind of a little bit of an equal amount of space and you're halfway through for your mountain ranges and the other half should be on the top, which is the sky. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes here to catch up with with our drawing and then we'll start coloring. By the time uh, we're going to start coloring, so the shades which you'll be needing are going to be purple, white, and pink. Again, purple, white, and pink are the three shades we'll be needing to get uh, started with our coloring today. The brush which you guys will be using is going to be a flat brush and it is going to look something like this for you. A flat brush, which has a flat edge in front. Now, let's say if you do not have a flat brush, you can use any brush which you have handy. So purple, white, and pink are the three colors we'll be needing to get started.
Okay, so we do have a question in the chat section asking, do you have an image of the finished painting you could show? Um, so Nancy, I do not have a finished image that is because I do take inspiration online but we do not exactly copy the painting from there it's kind of my own touch into it and we recreate it a little bit so I do not have a final image to show to you but uh, trust me it's going to be a nice painting at the end of the day here. And with the painting which we're making, it's very easy to make modifications as per your likings into it. So you could add up your own elements to that painting. So you can give it a personal touch as well. Alrighty, I've got some purple color here. Uh, let's say if you're using colors from tube or from um, bottles, please add a little bit of water. So we do not need a color which is this thick add a little bit of water to it and mix it properly. So if your color is running in one direction, if your water is running in the other direction, it's going to be a little bit difficult um, for you to blend it. So always blend it properly, first of all, and then I would get rid of the excess color and then start painting. So that's kind of a, a nice way to start it. Uh, I'm trying with this with watercolor crayon, so this will be interesting. Oh yes, Daniel, I think that would be pretty interesting. I would love to see your final results. I've never done that using watercolor crayon, so I think that would be good. So we'll be refreshing all the three colors, which is pink, purple, and white. So as our first step, we're going to first of all get started with the purple color. And our first layer here is going to be purple on the top. I'm going right to left, left to right in terms of coloring very, very, easy and uh, soothing strokes. We don't want to be super hard on our brush here. So we'll go nice and easy here. And I would probably go a couple finger spaces for my purple color here. Just a couple finger spaces. We're not going a lot down. So. After doing this much of purple color there, we're going to start with the white and I'm going to start doing the white color here, but we're just not going to do the white. We're also going to start blending it with the purple. So we're going to take the white color nicely inside towards the purple color, we're nicely going to have a smoother blend, which is starting from purple to our white, the color should not show a line, the blending should be easier. And that will happen when you take your white color nicely inside the purple. If you need to refresh your purple color, which is take the purple color again, and have a fresh coat of purple here. That way, the blending process will become a little bit easier for you. We'll go ahead and go ahead with a little bit of more white here. And it's okay if you don't get like proper white shade because we do want that touch of purple. So I haven't even cleaned my brush in between while like, well, even while I'm doing my white, if I need to take a bit of purple, I won't clean my brush because that's what we want, right? In our sunset, in the sky, we want a nice blend of the colors. We want the colors to be soothing and moving from one, from like one shade to another very easy. And right to left, left to right, easy strokes. Uh, once you have like bunch of strokes going on, once you do more lines here, your colors will automatically start kind of blending the shades in. 
So very important to blend it to get more strokes done there. And this is how we're easily going to transform from our purple to white. And then the next shade, we're directly going to start with some pink, which is going to be at our borderlines here as well. Mine is a little bit of fluorescent pink because I've ran out of my regular pink here, but please use any shade of pink you have. And even if you do not have a regular pink, you could always create one by mixing your red and white in which white will be a little bit more in quantity. Red will be just a tiny bit of red. You blend it, you see if you want to make it more darker, you can then add more red to it. I still uh, see some participants coming in. So if you uh, have missed out even like a little bit, or even if you're lagging behind in, um, in our painting here, this class is being live broadcasted. So here is the link in our chat section where you can look at the live broadcasted class, even our private previous classes, all our future classes as well, will be broadcasted um, on this link here. So please copy and paste it for your future references. We're going to go ahead with the pink here. We'll nicely fill it up again in the same direction. If you need to, like if you see my pink right now, it's looking super patchy. You can see I have a lighter pink here, a little bit dark pink here, it's patchy. So I'm going to go ahead with second layer of pink on it. So I've gone ahead with some pink till here, and now is the time to kind of start blending the colors in. Um, we have a question in the chat section which says you're using watercolors or acrylics. So I am actually using gouache colors. I am going to list down all the materials that I am using in the chat section. So yes, um, Purvi has a question, can we use watercolors? You can use acrylic colors, watercolors, gouache colors, any colors you have handy, please use those because you are going to use same techniques to do it. The results are going to be a little bit different because again, the colors are different. They're going to give you different results, but the techniques we're using are all going to be same. So you shouldn't be worried about it. Lovely, Philip, perfect. Um, Tony also says I'm using watercolor and it's not easy. Yes, the blend, blending is not, I wouldn't say it's extremely easy in the first try itself, but it's, it definitely gets better as you do more. So if there, if there's anyone here who is doing blending for the first time, even for, 
for for the first five to six times, it is a little bit difficult, right? Because it's it's a it's something which when when you do more, you learn a little bit more nicer. You develop those skills. So please don't burden yourself that oh, I need to get it this way, or why is mine not looking like hers? That is because I've practiced this a lot, lot, lot more. Um, so you'll you'll eventually get there. Don't pressurize yourself that mine needs to look like her, or some of yours might actually look better than mine as well so please don't uh, burden yourself with that already let's start now blending our white and pink here i'm again going to grab some more white i'm going to refresh my white here I'm just going to do right to left, left to right, and blending. If you feel your brush is way too dry and it's giving you like a dry brush effect, um, you can just take a little bit of water in your brush, pat it dry, and then with a, with a little bit of wet brush, you can just go ahead and kind of blend your shades this way and it's going to become a little bit easier for you. Alrighty, so once you've blended the shades in, it will look something like this. So purple, white, and then pink. Your shades nicely blended in. I hope everyone is catching up nicely here. The next step we are going to do, it's, um, it's a beautiful step here. So what we're going to do in these three um, different sections is we're going to do shades of blue. Meaning I use my dark blue regular shade here at the bottom most portion. We add a little bit of white to it. We do it here and then add more white to it, we we'll do it here. We're not going to use light blue. I want you to create your own shades just from two colors. So dark blue, lighter blue, and then lightest blue on the top, okay? So we're going to get started with the darkest blue. And because this one is kind of a little bit detailed outline, you can go ahead with comparatively a little bit smaller brush or round headed brush, which looks something like this, which is going to be a little bit easier for you to kind of do your outlines here. So let's get started with a dark blue, first of all. And we're going to start filling this up using our dark blue. My dark blue is pretty dark, so you might think it's black, but it's not. It is a dark blue shade. Again, we'll color in one direction. Try and color in one direction. I know sometimes it can be a little bit difficult because of the shape that it's taking, but wherever possible, try and color in one direction. It will give you least amount of strokes. It will look nicer at the end. Thank you. 
If required, please go ahead with two coats of color so your color looks nice and solid. For the next shade, I'm going to add a little bit of white to my existing blue color. And I will make it one shade lighter. And the next shade is going to go here. nicely going to fill these shades up. We'll try and make sure that there are hardly any white spaces or next to no, we'll fill it up more nicely. If required, go for double coats. Feel free to ask any questions you have in the chat section. And now for the third shade, which is on top here, don't rush everyone. After doing the third shade, I'm going to wait for everyone to catch up. So please do it nicely. This is very important one here, especially where the outlines are, where the two colors are mixing. We don't want those colors to blend. We want a very defined outline there. So go nicely, slowly, patiently. Um, on the third shade, I'm going to add more white to it. And then I'll start with my third one. And after that, I'll be waiting for everyone to catch up.
Um, so Lisa has a question here. She says, I bought gouache, but have never used it. Does it dry as fast as watercolor? Um, so you have to work quick, quickly and how easily does it clean up? Lovely. So um, gouache colors are very much similar to watercolors because they are water-based colors. They dry pretty quickly. So if you guys can see here, I've recently done my second coat here and that is already dried up. My third is third one on the top. It's still a little bit wet. So um, I wouldn't say dries up as quickly as watercolors, but I um, 10, maybe 10, 15 seconds more than watercolors. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're, they dry pretty quickly. It doesn't take as long as oil colors or acrylic colors. Uh, they dry pretty quickly. Second question is um, how easily does it clean up? I think they clean up way more quickly so even if i have it on my table or um anywhere else it cl cleans up quickly and one thing i love about gouache colors is if you guys see my palette here these are my dried colors and there's a reason i haven't cleaned these colors is because i can reuse these just like in watercolors so let's say if i have this color here it's completely dried right now because i used it yesterday or day before yesterday to do one of my other artworks i'm just taking a little bit of water and I'll do this here. And again, this color is good to use. It's already being refreshed. If you can see, I've already got that color on my on my uh, brush here, right? So that's the main reason I love gouache colors because I can again uh, reuse my colors from the palette. I usually make new shades on my palette, so it's it's good to have them there, and then I can just use it whenever I need to. So they're they're good colors. Gouache are a little bit creamier colors as well, more creamier than um, watercolors. So I, I like them better. I think I'm promoting gouache colors a lot here, but I use acrylics as much. So um, all colors have got their, their own uh, beauty, I guess, like more effects. Alrighty. So by the time everyone is doing um, their art here, I would like to give out some information about myself. Um, as everyone knows, my name is Palak. My studio's name is Palak Studio Inc. You all can find me on Facebook and Instagram with the same name. So please follow me on Instagram. I do upload lots of uh, reels and pictures and everything there showing up my new artworks, as well as I do um, update everyone there via my stories about the new free art classes coming up and new workshops and everything via even bright in person, everything. So if you aren't yet, do follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Other than that, um, I, I do multiple things, which is I give out workshops and everything about different art forms. I do take weekly workshops as well, which is weekly art classes for kids and for adults. Um, we have a question in chat section which, which says, is that finished? No, it is not yet finished. We still have more steps. I'm just waiting for everyone to catch up with these steps. And after that, we'll continue with our painting. So not yet finished. Um, as I was saying with the art classes, uh, we do different types of art forms, which is mandala art. We do sketching, painting with different forms and different, different things in our regular art classes. This one is the free one. So I do this free art class every week. We do different painting each week. Um, and please feel free to join each week you're more than welcome to uh, learn your skills in terms of in, in the free art class. It's more of how to blend the colors and doing doing different painting each week. Um, for the paid art classes, which are for kids and adults, I charge $64 monthly for kids, $96 monthly for adults. Um, it covers four art classes and each art class is two hours long, um, one and a half to two hours long. And then we learn different art forms. It's a small group class, which is just six people. So um, you keep yourselves unmuted, ask me unlimited questions. You can show me your artworks while doing it. So you get that personal touch and your, your um, journey towards improving your art becomes a little bit faster that way. 
Is it possible if I use pencil crayons? Uh, we have a question in our chat. Yes, absolutely. It is fine if you use pencil crayons. This class is specifically to learn like better painting. So the tricks and techniques I show Katrina are more towards that. But if you do not have watercolors, you can absolutely use pencil colors. Um, if you guys have any questions in regards to my art classes or anything, please feel free to visit my website, email me, send me a message on Instagram or just fill up the registration form and I'll be in touch with you. I'll quickly have the registration form in the chat section. So if anyone is interested, you could just leave all your details in there. Okay, so I'm hoping everyone's um, everyone's mountains are kind of drying up by now. Our next step up, we're going to show a few stars in our sky and we're also going to show a moon because we're trying to show a sunset -y look, but we are still showing some stars. Again, this is optional. If you don't want to show stars, you can just skip that. You can even have a moon here and some yellow lines around it. So this is something which can be customized. You can go as per your wish. You can see what kind of sunset -y colors you have and then choose accordingly. If you're doing a sun, you can do it in the whiter places. So it looks like uh, more lighter and you could show some yellow lines around it so to show that sunset -y look. I'm going to go ahead with a moon and with some stars. I'll firstly uh, show how to do these stars. So I'm just taking some white color in my regular round brush. And I'm just going to tap lightly. On the top. Now I'm not in intending to show stars below my white color in the pink section. No, I just want it over my purple here. So I'm just going to go ahead there. and show a few stars and that is it. I hope you guys can see it properly. And we'll also show a moon. Purvi has a question which says, how did you do stars? Okay, so I just took some white color in my regular round brush. Now don't take so much of color. If you take lots of color, your stars are going to be way too big. Just a little bit of color in your brush. Keep it this way and tap your brush. Once you tap it, you'll get these stars here. It's a method of trying try and error so you'll eventually know like how much color is needed to kind of get good stars you can also try that in a rough paper first and then try it on your final copy i'm going to do a moon here
um arthi says how did the colors show so well um i didn't get your question i think that's good that the colors showed up well and they're they're nice and bright bright enough uh but you can just rewrite your question uh, for me if i didn't understand it correctly please thank you all right i'm hoping everyone is done with their stars um with their moon or even if you're doing the sun if you're done with that after this step we are going to make a beautiful um tree here uh, we're going to do a nice detailed tree so you are going to need black color to do that and the first step with the black color is that you do it with a tinier brush a thinner brush the thinnest brush you have in your collection please use that to do the details that we're going to do next already so with the black color first step is if you're not com com comfortable or confident enough to do it directly with a brush please go ahead with a pencil first draw the lines which i am doing with a pencil first and then um, just trace it down the top portion here for the tree needs to be thinner and as we go down the lines are going to be a little bit thicker draw it with a pencil first and then you could just fill the colors and the lines up Okay, I'm going to show you how to do the tree. I'm directly going to do it with a brush. It should be fine for most of you to do directly with the brush as well. We're just going to go a little bit thinner on the top. And as we come down, we increase the width um, at the bottom. If your drawing is not dry yet, you could please wait. Just see how I'm doing the tree. Please wait for your drawing to be dried up and then you could do the same steps. So right now it's a good time to see how I'm doing it. Just going to go very, very crooked here. Just holding my brush a little bit and I'm just moving it here. Going in the direction here, but we're just going with very, very random crooked lines. And as you can see, as I go down, I'm increasing the width of my tree. Now, I'm also going to show you an easier version to do the same tree. You could also go this way here. So we're just leaving the brush. And even in this one, you'll be increasing the width of the tree as you go down. Something like this. So even this is fine. This is fine as well. Whatever you feel more comfortable with.
we have a question which says, hey, Palak, how do we do the tree you're drawing now? Okay, so to do the tree which I'm drawing now, again, I'm going to repeat my steps. We're going to start with a thin line on the top. And then as we go down, we'll make our line thick. So at the bottom most line, it's going to be nice and thick. And then we're going to start with our leaves. So the bottom leaves are going to be a little bit thinner. The bot uh, the top leaves are going to be a little bit thinner. So in terms of width thinner, and then as you go on the bottom portion, the width is going to be a little bit thicker. And then you basically go very, very crooked here this way. And you keep increasing the width of your tree. You fill up a little bit of portion, you keep some spaces wide, and then you could also go this way. But I think rather than this one, this looks a little bit more realistic for kids this option here would be more easier though. I hope I've clarified the question so you just continue this way here all the way down. Now again something which you could customize in your painting is I'm going to stick to only one tree here but if you want you could do two trees you could do multiple trees as well so you could customize it as you want it and you could also add some let's say birds if you want. I think I'll add some birds here. That's a nice one. I'm going at it for really, really tiny birds, I think that is going to add a very nice touch to it. I'm also going to untape my painting here so all of you can see how beautiful um, untaped painting looks here. Here we have a beautiful painting already done. Again, please customize it as your wishes. Go through the questions quickly. This is it. it, it looks great. Wonderful, thank you. How did you do the birds? Okay, so I took a small brush to do the birds and I'll bring it a little bit closer here so you guys can see what the shape of the bird is. It's just a V shape, uh, but some of the birds have increased, uh, you know, the feather length and some of them have kept smaller. Yes, we are done with the painting here. Um, I would love to see what all of you have done for your paintings. So if you could please, whoever is done, please st start showing it to me on the screen. I would love to see the results. I see Jasmine and Juliet. 
wow, I absolutely love your painting. It came out very, very pretty. Good job. Guys, your paintings are looking so good. I see Epson, uh, Epson's painting. Wow, I love how you've given the effects in your mountains, especially the second one, the dark to light effect. I absolutely love it. It looks very, very nice, very pretty. Thank you so much. If you guys like the class, please leave me a Google review. I, it would be lovely to hear uh, what you what you guys uh, think about my art class here. I'll quickly leave a link here uh, for the Google review and then I'll have again a look at everyone's painting. Alrighty, so in the chat section, you guys have the link. Um, I see Rakshia's painting, Rakshia, that looks absolutely wonderful. Very good job, dear, lovely. I see Daniel's painting. Daniel, that is very pretty. Good job there. Lovely. I see Gia's painting. Gia, that looks very, very pretty. Good job. Catherine, I love it. Absolutely love it. The sky looks very pretty. Good job there. Jacqueline, lovely painting. Very pretty. Love your sky. I see a screen which is naming iPhone. That is very pretty, good job there, lovely. Liana, Henley, very pretty guys. I love how your paintings have turned up everyone. It looks very nice. I see Isla, that is very pretty. I love your sky, Isla. Very cute, lovely painting. Melody, that is so pretty, good job, Melody. Good try there, lovely. Rachel, that is very pretty. Good job. I see Louis painting. Louis, that is very nice. I love your sun, like the sky colors. They're very light and very, um, very nice uh, look to it. Like your, your sky is very lovely. Love your shades there. Very pretty. Jasmine and Juliet. Oh, I see two paintings now. That is very pretty. Good. Lovely. Loved your paintings, guys. Very nice. Thank you so much for joining in, everyone. I see Judy and Steve's paintings there. Lovely. Good job. Look at your sky. Very pretty. Uh, Daniel says, thank you for this class. This was my first attempt at painting anything and my first time using watercolor crayons. Lovely. I appreciate this as a break from my normal day. Lovely. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate everyone joining in and please join us every week. I would love to have all of you in all my classes. It was lovely having you all wonderful group of class here. Uh, please leave me a Google review if you liked my class. It, it helps me reach my potential clients. I really enjoy these classes. Thanks. Thank you so much. I see R. Kapoor. Um, let's see your painting. That looks lovely. A little bit close up. Perfect. I love your sky. The bottom portion looks lovely. Good job there. Purvi, that is very pretty. Look at your borderlines. Super crisp, neat. Your, your lines and everything looks very nice. Love it. Good job. I, uh, iPhone. I see one screen as iPhone. That looks very pretty, dear. Good job there. I saw your painting, lovely. Thank you so much everyone for joining in. Lovely having you again. If you haven't yet, please follow me on Instagram. Palak Studio Inc is my handle. Um, I see Supreet's painting there. Supreet, let's see it. Oops, where did it go? Oh, right here. Lovely, good job Supreet. That is very nice. Very cute painting, just like you. Very sweet, good job there. Thank you for joining in, everyone. Lovely. Thank you, Arkpur9. Thank you so much for joining in. It was lovely having you all in the class. If you guys have any questions, I'm all open for it in the chat section. If not, we're done with the painting, so you can feel free to leave the class. Thank you, Kian, for joining in. Lovely having you.
Bye. Okay, guys, I am going to now end the call. Um, is it always the same link? So most of the times it is the same link to join, but um, we might change the link after a few classes. So it's always better to just register yourself on Eventbrite. So you're always updated with the latest link uh, for the class. I will send the pic when I'm done. Absolutely, Lustri. Sounds good to me. Thank you so much. If you guys do post your paintings on Instagram, tag me along. I would love to repost it for you as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in.